Very pleased to have with us on the show right now from the El Paso Shooters Academy, Mr. Uh, John Hubert is with us. And, John, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you, sir. It's a real pleasure getting a chance to talk with you. We uh, saw this story by Angela Kerchega from KVUE News in uh, Texas last week. Uh, some gun owners in Mexico defy the law to defend themselves. Now, you are, as I understand it, an NRA certified firearms instructor who lives in El Paso? Yes, sir, we are. Mm-hmm. And and do you do, do you get a lot of requests from people who are uh, Mexican citizens who live uh, in Juarez uh, wanting to get trained on, on how to be a safe and responsible uh, gun owner? Uh, in the years past, and I, I'm talking about several years ago, we, we did on occasion uh you know trained people you know from mexican mexico uh usually those with dual citizenship you know that uh either lived here and had property in mexico uh you know this kind of thing like that mm-hmm. over the past couple of years because of the border situation uh you know we we look at our our our, our students pretty carefully and we really can't take much of a chance on 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 uh you know training mexican nationals anymore yeah is there, let me ask you this, John, is there a desire, you think, among, you know, the, just the average folks who live in Juarez who want to be safe, they want their families to be safe, um, I, I, is there a desire to uh, to be able to own a firearm legally in Mexico? Yes, definitely. Uh, and and the, the it's not just the people in Juarez, it's a... Uh, the people in Mexico, you mm-hmm. know, uh, from the, you know, the guy out there trying to protect his goats from the coyotes, you know, to the guy that lives in, in Juarez and wants to protect his family from, you know, cartel members and stuff like that. Yeah. There, there, there is, you know, definitely desire and, and you know, but uh, there's just no cooperation with their government to allow them to protect themselves. So what do the people of Juarez think about the uh, the gun laws in Mexico? I mean, you know, the... The, the, the dichotomy is striking that in El Paso, uh, where, you know, supposedly the Brady campaign says our gun laws are horrible, one of the safest cities in the United States, in Juarez, right across the Rio Grande, the Brady campaign would love the laws that are on the books, but it's one of the most violent cities in, in the world. Yes, sir. Well, when only the bad guys have guns and they're doing it in violation of the law, only the, the law-abiding citizens, you know, are, you know, the people that are following the letter of the law, are the ones that are unarmed, and they're paying the ultimate price. Yeah, and are they aware of that? I mean, do they? What do they think about Mexico's gun laws? Uh, most of them don't like them at all. But in the, given the Mexican uh, political situation, military situation, criminal situation that they've got working over there, there's not a whole lot they can do about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, I have uh, neighbors who are actually getting ready to return uh, to Mexico. They've been away for uh, years and years. Uh, living in Germany uh, and living here. And I, I talked to them, you know, a couple of months ago. This was one of our first conversations. I had no idea what their answer was going to be, but I was really curious. I just asked them what they thought about the, the cartel situation and, and whether or not, you know, U.S. gun laws were to blame. And they looked at me, and John, they just laughed at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they said no. Uh, you know, and, they, and, and, and I guess they thought I didn't know a lot about the cartels. So they started explaining to me about the cartels and the billions of dollars in profit that they make every year. And, and I, I had to interject and say, okay, no, I, I get all that. I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page here. But I was just kind of curious what, uh, what you thought. I've actually yet to meet somebody who has lived in Mexico or is living in Mexico uh, currently who has said, oh, yeah, it's your gun laws that are the problem. I think you're going to see that in your upper level politicians, right? Uh, you know the the people that basically you know are opposed to uh, private ownership of firearms in Mexico, uh, because you know if the if the Mexican people had the ability to revolt, it's very possible you know that they could find out that uh, you know hey you know if we could protect ourselves and do something, it, it might go that direction. So. You've got the government, you know, that on one hand that's keeping that kind of pressure on them. And then on the other hand, the cartels don't want any competition. You know, they want to be able to walk into a restaurant or a club or a bar or, or somebody's home and just open up, you know, and, and kill everybody there mm-hmm. and not have to worry about somebody taking a shot back at them. Yeah, yeah. And and, and to that end, John, uh, I, I've got to ask, what do you think about uh, President Obama's uh, trip to El Paso to uh, to talk up the uh, the, the border issues? Uh, I wasn't too impressed. Uh, uh, I think he he was either fed some wrong information or, or uh, 
you know, every, not everything he said in his speech was true and correct. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that, uh, just, I mean, based on what you're seeing, and I realize, you know, the border is a very big place, thousands of miles long, um, but do you, do you think that the border is uh, secure? Uh, yes and no. In certain, certain areas, and uh, the border is secure. In other areas, it's still pretty much wide open. Mm-hmm. Uh, the border fence was never completed. It is a deterrent, definitely a deterrent. Uh, the electronics uh, in, that are in place, and I'm a retired Border Patrol agent. I rode the, rode the river for 30 years almost, and uh, I can talk a little bit about it. Uh, it's, uh, it's the economy is the, the uh, is, is, not driving the people to come over here as much as you know as as strongly as it did before. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, still, you know, uh, if people want to come over here, you know, to improve their their living standards and you know their the future of their kids and stuff like that. There's a legal way to do it, but you're always going to find somebody that doesn't want to follow the law, that wants to take the shortcut. Yeah, yeah. Well, John, listen, I can't thank you enough for coming on the program, sir. I hope we can do it again sometime. It was great you talking bet, to you. If you need anything, you give me a call. All right, thank you so much. John Hubert from the El Paso Shooters Academy joining us here on Cam and Company.